I'm Sonny Water from the Coma Mob in, uh, in uh, Queensland. Yeah, well, I want to tell a story about uh, my family uh, working on sheep and cattle stations uh, in far western New South Wales and, and south west Queensland. Yeah. I want to start with my grandfather Jack Orchard. Uh, he went to school and got educated and, and, you know, as a young kid in, in the 1800s. And, uh, and he used that education as he got older and got married and uh, he used that uh, white man's education against them because he didn't take his uh, families to town. He used uh, uh, stations like Urella, Middleton, Darawong and uh, uh, other stations uh, between Murramurra and uh, Wilmaringle. But these kids didn't get any education because he wouldn't allow them to go to school because they were afraid of losing their kids to this stolen generation uh, system. Uh, so they'd start on uh, working at the age of 13, 14, maybe 15 uh, as, as cowboys on the properties, fencing, uh, wood carting, uh, yard building, clutching, shearing, whatever had to be done, they do it sort of thing. And so, as he journeyed down towards uh, Wilmeringle, uh, even his daughters got jobs on properties as cooks, uh, cleaners, uh, but whatever other chores had to be done on the property. And, washing, ironing. Well, my grandfather, Jack Orchard, he was one of the lucky uh, kids back in the 1800s, Aboriginal kids, to get educated. And uh, it was only because uh, they wanted to build a school in Durham Bandy. And, uh, and they was two kids short, because they were only used white kids at the time. But they didn't have enough white kids, so they had to go and get two Aboriginal kids, and him and his brother, Tom, uh, were the two lucky ones. Uh, you know, they didn't think they were lucky at the time, but it, it worked out pretty good, yeah. So that's how he got educated. As uh, Grandfather Jack uh, got older, got married, and, and had, uh, uh, I think he had ten, ten children, and uh, he kept them away from the town uh, because he, he knew the white man system because uh, they educated him that way. And he used it to uh, protect his, his kids uh, from the Child Protection Board, I think it was called. And, uh, yeah, and that's why he, he hardly ever took them to, to town so they didn't get any education at all. They didn't go, even go to school. Yeah. My father, Dudley Orchard, uh, he started working at, at an early age, around about 13 or 14 years of age, as a cowboy in the saddle, most of his uh, young life, with jackaroo, horse breaker, shearer, fencer, he saw him in Queensland, New South Wales, South Australia, uh, in probably more than uh, 2,000 shearing sheds. He was uh, that good a shearer. Uh, in his prime, uh, shearing contractors would bid on him. And, uh, and the winning bid would, uh, would get him, you know, whether it was in South Australia or uh, Queensland or uh, down the Riverina in, in New South Wales. I started working uh, at an early age, at 14, because I had 11 brothers and sisters, and uh, there was no social service uh, or any benefits like that around them days. So when you was old enough uh, to go to work, you went to work. So I started working on uh, Elsley Station and as a cowboy uh, back in 
1966. And most of the work there was done on horseback, whether it was mustering sheep, cattle, uh, yard building, fencing, which really started my shearing career there. You know, uh, because uh, when a shearing contractor come there and didn't have a full team, it was about two men short. I was recommended by the, the farmer to take, take a stand and, and, uh, and I did. And, and then I got the opportunity to, uh, to travel with a shearing contractor for so many months and then, uh, then I come home and, and Dad learned me how to shear properly, you know, uh, the right way. And I've been shearing ever since. That's 51 years ago now. Yeah. Yeah, my grandfather, Jack, he, he always taught us how to, uh, to work hard and, and respect uh, elders and, and other people's property and, uh, and, and listen. Yeah. Uh, shearing took me all, all over Australia uh, as, a, as a young fella and, and, and when I got married, uh, I took uh, uh, my wife and, and kids uh, we, we travelled with a caravan to WA, uh, South Australia, Victoria, New, all in New South Wales, and, and most uh, Queensland. And uh, yeah, and what I love about the game is you know you meet new faces every day. To be in Brewarren today, in Armadale next Monday, and three weeks later could be in uh, Longreach in Queensland. You know. Uh, so you were never in the one spot too long anyway, and that's what I like about it. Maramara means two hands, and two hard working hands, uh, which I've been using and doing all my life. And uh, at the same time, I was looking after the land. Yeah, I'm still shearing today at the age of 65 after 51 years in the, in the shearing industry. Well, shearing uh, t uh, taught me a lot. You know, uh, it taught me respect. Uh, it made me a better man than just being a cowboy. Uh, and I recommend the, the shearing industry to my son, who is shearing today himself. I had a grandson and granddaughter. Uh, both in the wool as well, so, you know, I, I wouldn't change a thing if I had it all over again. They say Australia was built on a sheep's back, but without a shearer, that wool wouldn't come off.